Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Here we are again, your friends from the Bayard Assumption Media Foundation Incorporated. In this time of Lent, we are offering you this Lenten recollection. In general, I would like to explore again Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation entitled Gaudete et Exultate, which he wrote in 2018. Rejoice and be glad. The main message of Pope Francis in that apostolic exhortation is not simply to exhort us, but to remind us that the universal call to holiness is not only for you and me, not for the people in the past, but also the people for us who live today. The call to holiness is still as applicable today as it was before. In this segment of our Lenten recollection, I would like to share with you my reflections about the life of one of the great saints of the first four centuries of Christianity, and he is none other than Saint Augustine of Hippo. I would like to entitle this Lenten recollection, Conversion in the Path of Saint Augustine. Pope Francis, in the Apostolic Exhortation Gaudete et Exultate, wrote that we do not have to look far to be able to know who are our models of holiness. Because even in our midst, we have what Pope Francis called as the saints next door. Why next door? Because he said, these saints, these holy people, could be our parents who raise their children with immense love. Those men and women who work hard to support their families, the sick, and the elderly religious who never lost their smile their joy of living life in the service of God. As I said earlier, I am not about to explore lives of contemporary holy people, but I'd like to offer you the path of Saint Augustine in terms of his conversion. Lent my dear brothers and sisters, is a time of prayer, a time of mortification, a time of repentance, of sins, almsgiving, simple living, and self-denial. It is also a time to review, to review our life to look back on our life and to be able to renew ourselves in the presence of God. Lent, moreover, there is a practice that we do, which is the reading of lives of saints, 
or holy people to help us to dispose us into the path of conversion or the path of holiness. Let us begin with a prayer from St. Augustine of Hippo. Look on us, Jesus, and let all the darkness of our souls disappear before the beams of your brightness. Fill us with your holy love and open us to the treasures of your wisdom. You know all our desires, so bring to perfection what you have started and what you have awakened us to ask in prayer. We seek your face, turn your face to us, and show us your glory. Then our longing will be satisfied and your peace will be perfect in us. Amen. I think, dear brothers and sisters, by now, you must ask yourselves, what is meant by conversion? Conversion is the process of changing or causing something to change by our own will, the will of others, but the most important point there is change, the process of change, the act of changing. The fact of changing one's religion or beliefs also mean conversion or the action of persuading else, someone else, to change his or her religion. But we are not so much on that. What we are talking about today is the change in the interior life. Conversion denotes the human volition and act by which a person in obedience to divine summons, divine invitation, that determines to change the course of one's life and turns to God. That is, from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verse 3. Conversion. Now, you might ask, who is Saint Augustine? What were his experiences of conversion? Was it a one-shot deal? It happened at one moment? Or was it a process consisting of different moments in his life. Let us see the life of Saint Augustine. He was born in 354 AD in Tagast, now Souk Aras, in present-day Algeria. His mother is what we popularly know as Saint Monica, she was a devout Christian. His father is Patricius, a pagan who converted to Christianity on his deathbed on account of the prayers and the effort of Saint Monica. Augustine considered his mother Monica, 
a central figure in his life, while he considered his father Patricius a stranger. Being a central figure in his life, Monica had great influence on St. Augustine, including his beliefs, although later in his life as a teenager, he questioned these beliefs. One incident in the life of St. Augustine that he cannot forget was when he was a child, a child of 11 years old. And this incident he did with his friends, what we call now as his katropa, his peers. What happened? One day, with his friends, they strolled in the nearby farms. And then, an idea came up, and they stole the pears of the neighbor not because they were hungry, but because, as St. Augustine would write in his book, Confessions, because the act was not allowed. So what about that? If the act is not allowed, what's so significant with it? Well, just like some of us, some people just want to see how it feels and what's gonna happen when one violates that act or a rule, when one does an act that is prohibited. In his book, Confessions, St. Augustine wrote, The act of stealing the pears with my friends was very foul, but we love it. I love my own error. Love. Like. More than like. Because he loved his own error. From this, he realized that a person is inclined to evil and that a person needs God's grace to be able to overcome that inclination, tendency, to evil. St. Augustine and his friends know that the act of stealing is bad. But they continued to steal the pears from the neighbor's farm because they simply love the error. In our contemporary language, we say, trip, trip lang. And so, after that, they did not even eat the pears. They threw the pears to the pigs and were delighted at seeing the pigs enjoying eating the pears that they stole. Perhaps we can ask ourselves these questions. Do I remember something I did when I was younger that was morally wrong 
or not permitted by society. How do I feel about it? What insights do I get from the incident? Moving on, in the life of St. Augustine, when he was 17, Augustine moved to Carthage in, Sa in North Africa to continue his education in rhetoric. Around this time, against the advice of his mother Monica, Augustine led a hedonistic life, associating with young men who boasted of their sexual exploits. The need to be accepted by the group forced inexperienced teenagers like St. Augustine to seek or to make up stories about sexual experiences. This we know from his writings in the book Confessions, chapter 2, verses 3.7. While a student in Carthage, Augustine decided to become a Manichaean, much to Monica's despair. Manichaeism had a very strong influence on people during this time, especially in North Africa. St. Augustine was seeking for the truth, for real happiness. And in his search for truth, in his search for real happiness, he was led to the Manichaean movement. At about the same time, Augustine began to have an affair with a young woman and this relationship lasted for over 15 years and it produced a son named Adeo Datus. Monica did not approve of this affair because she favored another woman for St. Augustine. Points for reflection. Have I experienced looking, searching, seeking for something material or beyond the material? What did I do? Where did this seeking lead me? What do I realize? How do I feel with this seeking, this searching? Did I find what I was seeking for? Did I discover what I was looking for? From Carthage, St. Augustine went to Rome in 383 AD to look for greener pastures because after he finished his studies in rhetoric in Carthage, he began to teach, but he was not paid enough. 
And so he looked to Rome for greener pastures. And he was a teacher, a known teacher by this time. In Rome, he got attracted to a philosophy known as skepticism, which holds that all knowledge can be doubted, and therefore it denies the certainty of knowledge. And because of this philosophy, St. Augustine questioned what he received as truth in Christianity. From Rome, Augustine moved to Milan, where there was an opportunity for him to serve in the court, in the civil government, and where his mother Monica joined him as well as some of his friends. By this time, Monica and his friends urged St. Augustine to go back to Christianity. And by this time also, he gave Christianity a deeper study. What facilitated this? Who facilitated this? In Milan, St. Augustine went to the Mass celebrated by the Holy Bishop, St. Ambrose. He met him, and in their first meeting, this changed Augustine forever. He found Ambrose a friendly man, and St. Augustine wrote about St. Ambrose. That man of God received me as a father would and welcome my coming as a bishop should. He was very regular in his attendance in the masses of St. Ambrose. And St. Ambrose preached forcefully and with efficacy such that St. Augustine was on his way to going back to Christianity. In 386 AD, after listening to the stories about St. Anthony of the desert, Augustine converted to Christianity. This was prompted by a childlike voice that he heard one day while he was strolling in a garden, and this voice was telling him, Take up and read. Take up and read. He took this as God's command to take up the scriptures and read it. When he took up the scriptures, he opened the Bible and his eyes fell on St. Paul's letter to the Romans, especially chapter 13, which says, Not in rioting nor drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. St. Augustine recalled his past life with his catropa, with his mistress, with his searching for happiness, which is anchored on vices. 
And so, in April 24, 25, midnight, 387 A.D., Bishop Ambrose baptized Augustine along with his son, Adeodatus. In 388, Augustine and Adeodatus returned to Africa and lived in aristocratic leisure in the family property. But before the return to Africa, Monica died in Ostia, Italy. Soon after, Adeodatus died, and Augustine sold all his properties. Following the conversation between Jesus and the rich man, so that he will be able to completely follow Jesus. So he sold all his properties, except for the family home, which he converted into a monastic foundation with his friends. And all revenues of such sales were given to the poor. In 391, Augustine was ordained a priest by popular acclamation, as it was the practice at that time in Hippo Regius. He became a great and effective preacher. He wrote books such as the Confessions, which I mentioned earlier, The City of God, and De Doctrina Christiana. And in 395, he became co-adjutor bishop and became shortly thereafter he fought against heresies like Manichaeism, Donatism, and Pelagianism. Here, St. Augustine showed his love for the Church, his fidelity to God. Finally, in 430 A.D., St. Augustine breathed his last. For our reflection, we ask ourselves, what have I done in relation to my turning points? What or who sustains, motivates, inspires me to remain or to move forward from these turning points? What plans do I have in relation to these turning points? Finally, I invite you, brothers and sisters, to pray with St. Augustine by saying, Late have I loved you, Beauty so old and so new. Late have I loved you. And see, you were within, and I was in the external world, and sought you there. And in my unlovely state, I plunged into those lovely created things, which you may. The lovely things kept me far from you, though if they did not have their existence in you, they had no existence at all. You called and cried out loud and shattered my deafness. You were radiant. You were resplendent. You put to flight my blindness. You were fragrant, and I drew in my breath, and now pant after you. I tasted you, and I feel but hunger and thirst for you. You touch me, and I am set on fire to attain the peace 
which is yours. Amen.